Okay. Frozen stuff. I mean, I know a lot of people say, oh, I'm born in the wrong era. I actually was born in the wrong era. I cannot relate to so many of the, I mean, obviously we're spoiled nowadays with technology and shit, but I would love to have been back in the 70s and 80s. Really? I would just relate so much more back then. Musically, little history too is, I own a picture that Gigi Allen took at Queen's very first show in America, which is very bizarre to think about, you know what I yeah. mean? 1974, Portland. Oh, and Mark just sent me. Slam idea for the fill coming out of the disco part and barber boards and nails. Go around the kit and flam, snare, rack tom, uh, floor tom, floor tom, and then hit both floor toms at the same time at the end. So it'd be like. Okay. That's car driving? Never know when an idea is going to strike you. Could be on the toilet, could be while you're driving to the Poconos. You don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're gonna be in a cabin in the middle of the woods somewhere over here. Yeah. Also, this <laughs> looks like uh, like from a horror. Movie. That's what I was about to say. You could be running from a slasher in one of these woods. You know what I mean? You would have no. What are you gonna do? Where are you gonna go in these woods? There's no. There's nobody around. Who's gonna hear you? Yeah. So, if I have to bury a dead body, you know where I'm burying it. I was like, I want a cabin in the Poconos because I know the Poconos is relatively not, you know, not, I, don't, I don't want to say nothing, but in comparison, I guess, to a place like Hasbrook Heights or a place like Warwick or Clifton, it's not, you know what I mean? There's nothing here to distract you. There's nothing else to do. I haven't been outside today, so we record music all day. And I think the bonus part of that, aside from not um, being necessarily distracted or feeling like the clock's kind of ticking against you, even though it technically is because we're only here for a few days, is that this is, um, like for one reason or another, we just have never had the opportunity to record in a space like this. We've, we've been in, in like nice studios and worked with like a lot of cool people in different places, but to have this like huge ceilings and all wood surfaces, we just never had a space to do that and that was something that was very important for us to get a certain type of sound. Why we chose a wooden cabin is um, I love, every, I mean I wear my influence on my sleeve, I love the sonic uh, aesthetic of the 70s and 80s with massive production especially. Well the thing is with this album that I would, I, there's absolutely no way I could abandon the Queen uh, influence within my music. but. Running Out of Time was compared so much to Queen, understandably so because they're my, one of my biggest influences, that I wanted to escape that aesthetic in some aspect. And that's why with a lot of the songwriting on this album, Alex contributed two really good songs. And I wrote- I did? <laughs> <laughs> Barber and Boards and Nails and Don't Lose Your Head. That's two, sort of two tracks there. Hmm. Math, what are you gonna do? <laughs> You want to use my DI? Okay. I 
I didn't want to make a running out of time part two in the sense of, oh yeah, this sounds like Queen, and because that's what every review from, what's that magazine we were in? Um, Rumor? No, not Rumor. Uh, Horror, Horror Hound. Hound. Horror Hound. We did, we, I mean, from, from Horror Hound to fucking every like person that interviewed. And that's not a slight on them because it makes sense. That's what it sounded like, you know, like a queen meets punk rock. But I didn't want that with this album. So I purposely for months have not listened to Queen. I just listened to The Misfits with Glenn. <laughs> but no, 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 it's not just that because even you'll hear in like the opening track, like I was saying, like there's definitely weird info, like a lot of Japanese influence within the intro and like... Stuff like that that's outside of the box that people wouldn't normally um, attribute with punk rock. Because I don't want to be just another punk rock band. Like, I love punk rock. I love everything there is to it, whether it be the aesthetic, the sonic quality, like just the vibe. But I don't want to, I mean, there's already punk bands out there. I want to be something that's more than a punk rock band. Nice, Alex. First take, I'm gonna break a stick, come on. Unbelievable. All right, let's roll it again. <laughs> take two. <laughs> Yeah, there's definitely stuff that like I don't need. There's all the extras. Um, yeah. So it's just bass, keyboards, and guitars and vocals. At, once the keyboards start, after four clicks is when you start doing the. Okay. So keyboards come in. So, so one, two, three, four. Ba, ba, ba. So like. Look up. Exactly. Once the keyboards come in for one, two, three, four, you're in. I'm in. This is the one. Give me a little more. Was the one? Yeah, that I, there was, was the like one, one weird little spot safe. in there, but no, that's that. That was absolutely the one. That's what I love about working with everyone here is that uh, it's a very open and like there's no um, animosity with like like there was one track um, calling the Starfleet that was like a very specific intense drum beat that after a handful of tries, it was just like not clicking right and Rob jumped behind the kit and because it was in his head, it was almost willed out where it's like, he isn't necessarily at like where I may be level wise with drumming and like what I can do, but with what was in his head, it just made more sense for him to play drums on that track. And it's just like, okay, well, I'm not offended by that. It's like, that's what's in your head. That's what we're going to do. If there's something that you could do better, I will absolutely have you do it. I mean, that's why I think Alex did the bass on Dolores Head because I was happy with what he was doing. That's why you drum because I'm happy with what you're doing. I know you're going to do it better than me. And um, Plus, it's a real bitch to try to sing lead and drum at the same time. <laughs> well, 
That too. I mean, if, if Rob... Well, Ro- Roger Taylor you know, disagrees. Honest, if what? Rob had, you know, eight arms and legs, he, you know, he'd probably play everything. But I think also he... It's it just it's just cool collaborating with other people. I mean, that's that's the whole point of Absolutely. it. Absolutely, and that brings the best out in everyone else. That's and why, the worst sometimes. But that's why this album will sound the way it does. Is because, I mean, while you, Alex, and I have similar interests musically, we all have very different interests. Like, there's Absolutely. definitely like Absolutely. we have a common ground in a lot of ways, but there's also shit that like you listen to, I listen to, and he listens to. There's nothing like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, that, but that's what makes a band work. It's more about aim, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, because you're coming off, you're trying to use that as exactly. that. Exactly. Stop! Exactly. You know? Come yeah. off like that. you know, over 12 hours and your whole day is just like, it's just doing it. You're not really, it's a very, um, I, I don't know like what the exact word is, but like you're, you're just in the moment and you're not like dissecting it. You're just doing it. Right. So you're there, you're present and, and everything's happening. So it's like, okay, we just, you know, uh, we, we just did drums on three songs. Like, Let's take a break from that while we're fresh. Let's move over. Like now we're gonna like swap this cable, do that. Like we're gonna do the guitars, we're gonna do the bass. And you know, the 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 exoskeleton of the plan was there, but then we just like we just went into it and did it and it was like a very fluid thing to get everything done. And we feel like we got it all done without um, compromising anything either because of like the short time frame because we were so prepared for it, so. Well, the real brass tacks of it too is money. Like, I don't have money for, to rent this for a week. I mean, uh, it would be too hard for them probably to take a week off for just a recording session. So we have to make it work within this time frame of a weekend, you know what I mean? You have to be prepared. We have to be focused, we have to be hungry. You know what I mean? You have to want it. We can't be just lily-dallying, you know, just taking our time with it, you know? We wanna, not even that we're not taking our time, but like, that we're not um, focused and zeroed in and trying to get the job done, you know? And I think that's a, that, that becomes a problem with a lot of these big bands is because they have such a big budget, they, budget, they could just fuck around and not get the job done. And then they lose focus of what's important and what's, what, you know, you're here for the reason, not the season. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, this guy, you know, was up at 8 o'clock in the morning comping uh, tracks, and I'm, I'm trying to freaking sleep, you know? We were up, you know, all hours of the night last night, you know? I mean, hey. But, no, just all that, uh, you know, aside, it's it's true. It's true, and it's, and it's you know, this is what we're here to do, and, and um, you know, we got to make the most of it. Yeah, this is this is gonna be a comping <laughs> college course, but well, this is a, so this we're, is gonna, to we're gonna open with this one when we play live, right? New warm ups from Mark. Wow, well, this, 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 this is just never gonna be played live. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we're just open with this one. Get you, get you five no. or six beers. No warm up. No, I, I think on this one I'm gonna play guitar live. I'm gonna oh, learn this on guitar. Oh, okay. I don't know about that. Maybe bass. Maybe bass. I mean. Could be. Could be. I mean, we might have to call a timeout, and between the three of us, we can all play drums enough, and we'll get it. Oh, the asshole shuffle? Okay, I've done that before. <laughs> I mean, we take a 30 minute set, and we play this one song that we just take turns playing. Basically. And whoever gets furthest along in the song before we screw up wins the set. 
right? It's a fair competition. It's, hey, you know, I think it's a new avant-garde thing where you play one song for the whole thing, but it's not a, it's not like a jam band where you're just riffing for a half an hour. We're literally trying to play the same song with like takes in between. <laughs> and the best part is, if we get frustrated, we can go all grunge and Nirvana and smash the kit, and it's it's Mark's it's not, kit. It's not, <laughs> it's not my kit. It's not my kit. Cool. Uh, I'll make sure to. Rent a kit for that? I don't know. <laughs> it's also just like understanding um, kind of like the bigger picture of where the song is going to end up. So instead of like if you did three guitars with everything exactly the same, well now you're just narrowing the space that you have to work with because it's just like you're just stacking same mud, mud basically. So if you use a different guitar, a different mic, you're kind of carving a spot for each thing to be in. There's only so much sonic realty that could be on a record. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's why you up the treble, you up the bass, because everything takes up realty. You know, so, there's only so much you could fit into a space. Like, for example, with, with the drums, the way, like, in the recording software, I left all of the faders at Unity, which is zero, um, across the board. I didn't adjust any of those, and we set all the analog, uh, the initial levels, to where they needed to be. So when you actually get into it, it's it's just like already sitting kind of where it needs to be. Obviously, there's more that has to be done to it, but that's the idea behind it is you do the you do the prep and you're carving a space for each thing to be in. I sent my dad some pictures of the uh of this setup and he's like, wow, you guys got a lot of uh, a lot of hardware going on there. I said, oh, you know, my boss has high expectations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, Jesus uh, Christ. You can't send just anybody outside looking for fucking rocks to hold down the stands. <laughs> At the end of the day, we gotta go outside and grab a couple rocks to hold down the stands because you know what, they're just, they're just too top heavy. And uh, you know, we gotta, use uh, a, a shelf full of board games to put the recording equipment on and and uh you know we're using the couch as a natural diffuser for the sound We already talked about, you know, the high ceilings and the wood and all that, but like there's a brick fireplace behind the drums and then we put the couch, like the couch, I mean, we're really getting into the weeds with like the, the nerdiness like, of the recording, but well, that's good. Th this is like, I mean, this is kind of going back to what Rob and I talked about before where it was like, not like we have thoroughly enjoyed our past recording experiences and um, have made some great sounding records, but to take what we've learned up until now and then like to be put in a position where we have a space where we can do these kinds of sonics, it's just like, wow. Definitely. I mean, I mean, I've, I've never been able to had a chance to record in like a, a big space like this and you, to have... You do remember where all this shit was, right? Because we're going to have to put it back. I mean, <laughs> We didn't even take pictures of nothing. Yeah, so. we gotta be out of here in like 10 hours. Clean up. What was like some of the influence beside, behind the songs themselves? Like not specifically the structures to be different, but like... Lyrically? Yeah, like what? what is well, it's like, okay, so this is different, but well, like what are you writing oh, about too like, that's different? Well, lyrically... There's never been like writing I've ever. Well, I, it was a challenge with this album because if you look at the lyrics on every single song, it's all perspective writing. In the sense, that I'm not trying to sound like an artsy fartsy asshole, but take my ghastly hand. The first verse is about. So take my ghastly hand. I'll be straight up honest. Is about wanting to kill yourself and killing yourself. 
the first verse is the perspective of somebody finding you, you know, or in the sense of rather, I'm trying to think, so we came to uh, was is somebody finding your body. The choruses, which is the next progression from the verse, is about a divine being, a god or devil, whatever you believe in, accepting you into this neverland or heaven or hell, whatever, whatever. There's no um, specific, uh, you know, uh, connotation. No, the, the, it, it's up for imper- interpretation because there's no. I'm not a believer of anything. I'm agnostic. I don't go one way or the other. So I left it up for, for interpretation. trying to challenge myself because you get bored as a songwriter after a while you know that's why like I love singing Alex's don't lose your head because it's the lyrics are so clever in the sense of like their analogies and laughing but it's true yeah, yeah, yeah. are they not like analogies and like a, a, very, a visual story tell I just like playing with words and I take the um, the Ian Mackay approach he uh, he was talking about when he used to write songs for Minor Threat, and he he said, "I'm gonna tell you exactly what's on my mind, and I'm gonna do it in under two minutes." Like I don't know, I I, I don't like being wordy. If I can say something, no, but you are very wordy. Two words. Okay, well maybe it's, maybe I used to be wordy, but I don't know. Less is more. Yes and no. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think Don't Lose Your Head is a beautiful poem in, in a way, like a story, you know what I mean? Because, I mean, Don't Lose Your Head in the grand scheme of things is about a dying flower in a sense. I guess. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember. I don't even remember. <laughs> well, no, that's what I mean. That's, that's very that, poetic. It, it, it's, it, it, it's very poetic in that sense because you would never think of it as that. But it is when you, re- when you dissect the lyrics. I watched too many old Adams family episodes. <laughs> There's ego in music, and it's a po- it doesn't always ego. When people hear ego, that always there's a connotation of being negative. That doesn't always mean that. There's, there could be a very positive thing with ego. Ego could be a very good thing in the sense of you want to be the best. Why wouldn't you want to be the best at what you could do? You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean I'm just saying you know it, if you're not thinking about the clock or your wallet that's two less distractions and you can focus on the music. It's, it, I guess it, it, it comes down to a personality thing in, the, in that sense. Like, there's certain people that work better under the gun. You know, there's- yeah. Right, yeah, no, I, I, I can attest to that, to having that balance where it's like, you know, uh, you know, there's like, you, you could have someone that has all the, the capabilities and means available to them, but if they're not self-motivated or if there's no external, pressures to do anything then it might just sit there and not ever get done so it's, it's definitely a balance where if you're gonna do something like Rob's doing you definitely have to be self-motivated and because it could be an endless timeline and that's not good either so it's a good thing that he you know is like forward thinking with like well I want to do this and this next and like you know for example this the cabin EP is most likely going to come out sometime this summer or later this year and it's like I mean technically does that need to happen no it could be an endless book where it's like I'm just going to keep working on this until whenever so if you set some sort of a deadline that's kind of well, if you think how you get stuff if done. you think about it say I didn't have that that um, I don't want to say motivation but say I didn't I didn't work in that perspective the music videos for running out of time would have never been done because of COVID um, Fly by Night would have never been able to have been done if I didn't say, all right, we have to do it as soon as it gets mixed 
in order to have everything on a timeline that is appropriate and you know fair. Because I, I I would hate to sit on something as it gets stagnant and old because I'm always looking forward to the next thing. Yeah. Plus, it would have been a real shame if we had to shoot the fly by night video when it was you know warm or not raining. Yeah. Also, mask and uh, having to worry about catching COVID. doing what I'm doing because you never know when your time is up. You don't know. That's not to sound morbid or depressed and that, that's not depression or anything talking. You don't know when your time is up. Record what you can and that's why another big thing with my home studios, I'm recording stuff all the time. There, I mean, after I'm gone, there's shit to be released for fucking years.
all gotta go anyway, right? Yep. It's empty. I don't know what the fuck you want to do.